Uh, so good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'm joined by Etienne Bezanko from Chateau Carigil in Corbière in the south of France. And we're just chatting about um, the weather and what a beautiful evening it is here in Ireland. We've finally got some spring weather, which is nice. Before we start, um, I've got to go through the house rules um, of the online tasting. So please bear with me. To ensure everyone can hear our hosts, all participants will be muted during the presentation. If you have questions for the speakers, please use the chat function at the bottom middle of your screen and we'll answer as many queries as possible. There is also Q&A at the end of the tasting for any additional questions. To get the best view of myself and Etienne, please choose speaker view in the top right hand corner of the screen. This is a virtual tasting and it's being recorded, but only the hosts are being recorded. So please feel free to leave your camera on. And it's much nicer for Etienne and I if you do, because otherwise we feel we're in a wilderness on our own. Uh, please remember to eat and drink throughout the tasting for the best tasting experience. And we will have a two minute break after the first two wines, just to allow you to top up on water or any nibbles or crackers that you want to have during the tasting. Tomorrow we'll send out a link of the tasting um, in the afternoon and it can be viewed again or as many times as you want to. And um, if you couldn't make it tonight or if indeed you want to revisit the tasting after this evening. OK, so thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. And um, obviously, Etienne, thank you very much for joining us. Um, you're you. um, streaming live from Chateau Caraguil this evening in Corbière in the south of France in the Languedoc region. Could you just maybe explain roughly where that is for us, Etienne, in terms of geography? Uh, where where uh, Caraguil is? Yeah. Um, so we are in the south of France, um, next to Spain. We are not so far from Spain, uh, at um, around 100 kilometers. Uh, on the north of the um, of Spain, we are in the Corbier region, which is between the sea, Mediterranean Sea, and uh, uh, if you know the city Toulouse, this is a quite big city in southwest of France, um, and more precisely between the sea and Carcassonne, which is quite famous here. We are aligned uh, Carcassonne Dublin uh, by by plane. <laughs> and um, so we are in the middle of the Corbière and more specially in the small appellation called Corbière Boutonac. Okay, so that's, that's the, like the, the, the core, the, the most premium area within yeah. Corbière, is that right, Etienne? Mm. Yeah, okay. that's right. Mm. And, and what would define the wine style from Corbière? What would be the the um the defining feature of that particular style uh, in, i i don't know in highland but in france we have we don't have a good uh, image um because uh, before it was the region region uh, which produced a big quantity of wine with uh, big volumes and to make uh, wine uh, is it very easy to drink not very um, is it was more based on volume than that on uh, quality um, but we still have for several people uh, we still have this image so we have to work to uh, to explain what we what we try to do here what we try to make and uh, um, because we um, we arrived in Karagi in uh, 2007 and uh, we believed in this terroir. And I think in Corbier, we can uh, make wine with a, a very fruity wine and when, with the good freshness and not um, so rustic as we, we could believe. It was okay. the image before, and we tried to change this image. And okay. uh, I think, especially with the white, which is a a very small production in Corbia, we have a good, very, very strong potential. Okay, thank you. And you mentioned the T word, terroir. Yeah. Um, so I know that this is a subject close to your heart. You, um, you obviously started right at the beginning of your career and made a movie about terroir, which took you all over the world. So could you maybe explain this 
first of all, what the notion of terroir means to you, um, because it's very much a French term, but I know everyone has their own individual interpretation of the meaning of the word. And then maybe tell us a bit about the movie, but start with your definition of terroir, if you don't mind. Yeah, okay, uh, it's difficult to explain in French. So in English, it will be quite difficult. But um, I, think I, I remember an Australian winemaker told us that terroir is a French word. Uh, we can't uh, understand if we are not French. And that's you, yes, you say. But um, I think at first for me, terroir was only the soil. Okay. Then, then we, on, on the way, uh, it was the soil and the, um, the climate, and may, perhaps mainly the climate. But I think one of the more important things in the terroir is the man, the man, uh, the winemaker, and uh, how the people who work around the wine to make the wine. Because we choose the grapes, we choose the rootstock, we choose uh, um, the, the, the parcel to plant vines. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's a mix, it's a blend with the soil climate and, and the man. And, uh, and if it the man, does it, would it include in your definition things like the flora and fauna within the vineyard and, you know, I suppose in climate that's including wind and sun and rain and yeah. so on, but, you know, the geology, the, um, I guess, the exposition, but do, would you include the other plant life and, you know, fauna that are in the vineyard as your definition of terroir? Excuse me, can I... Would you, would you include, say, flora and fauna, the biodiversity ah. of the other plants and animals within the vineyard as part of your terroir definition? Yeah, uh, it, it's belong, yeah it, it belongs to the site, fauna okay. and flora. I, I don't know if it gives um, a special expression to the wine. Okay. But, but it's here and it belongs to the surroundings. It belongs to the place. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So is it fair to say that terroir is the expression of the place? Which does include man and climate and yeah, and uh, I remember that uh, you, yeah, I don't know if you remember a winemaker called Denis du Bourdieu, mm -hmm. a French winemaker from uh, Sauternes, mm -hmm. and he, he told uh, terroir is a taste, mm -hmm. the taste of the wine, and you can okay. uh, you can a taste you can recognize. Okay. So he, exactly. It's expression of a place, okay. and um, and I, I think the, the the vine and the grape is a vehicle to express your the soil climate. and your climate. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. So listen, while we're talking about the movie, let's have a taste of the first wine. Please, please don't everyone wait for us to start. I'm sure that um, you've all had a taste of the white. And just to mention that for the best question over the course of the evening, there's a bottle of the Chateau Solace as a prize for the best question. So get your questions <laughs> coming in. Um, Sean's already sent a question in. He said, um, we had a look at the Chateau de Caraville website. Very informative. We also looked at the map of all your soil types that you have there in the vineyard. Can you tell us what grape varieties you grow on the different soil aspects and, aspects and why? So we're going to come back to that question, if that's okay, Sean, because we'll talk about that as we talk through the wines, because I think that's the most natural place to have that conversation. So tell us about the movie, Etienne, Le Voix de Terroir. Why did you decide to make this movie? Yeah, I think it was uh, one of the best ideas uh, I had for the moment. Um, okay. We finished our studio with a friend of mine, which is... Um, winemaker in Bergerac. And uh, we decided to, normally at the end of your study, you have to, to spend six months and working in a, in a winery. Mm -hmm. it, it was not our idea. And uh, the first idea, it was to visit everyone 
uh, who was uh, making uh, the vinification. Okay. And uh, it was, and uh, it's, it's, we did it nearly uh, 20 years ago. It's quite, uh, but it was at the time um, when in France, uh, we didn't know if we t it was a good idea to have uh, to produce wine of appellation with, with an idea of terroir, like Corbière is an appellation, mm -hmm. uh, or Gigoudas or Chateauneuf. And maybe it was better to produce um, wine with strong brand, like we, we could see in the New World, in uh, South mm -hmm. Africa, in Australia, in New Zealand. Um, that's why our idea is to, was to um, to understand what the in these countries what the the thought about terroir if terroir had a signification for for them or okay. uh, or not. So we we decided to go and uh, first we we went to South America in Chile, uh, Argentina, Brazil. And it was very nice to meet winemakers, to meet uh, journalists, to meet uh, everyone around the, uh, the wine world. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we went to Australia and New Zealand, and, and of course, in, in France. And um, so I, as I told you, our first idea, it was a terroir for us. It was the soil and the geology and only that, but we, it was a very nice reflection thanks to the people who produce wine in use in these countries mm. and for, for and them did they all them, have a strong sense of terroir for their yeah. own yes mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah yeah of course and uh, and sometimes more than in france yeah uh, interesting. More, uh, there are more um uh, I don't, I don't have the, the name in English, um, extremist, you know. Uh, oh, a more extreme version. Mm. Okay. And, um, that's right, it was very interesting. And for them, uh, friends uh, keep a very good image mm -hmm. thanks to uh, its history and thanks to its terror. Mm. The, best, the best region for, for everyone is Burgundy. Is, uh, Burgundy is a dream. Okay, of course. Um, <laughs> sometimes, so, perhaps, sometimes Corbia. They, they will talk about Corbia. I don't know. So let's let's um, talk about the white then. Um, so first of all, the grape varieties in the in the white wine. So this one is the so La Font Blanche, and made with uh, three grapes, mainly Roussan. Uh, Roussan historically uh, comes from uh, the Rhone Valley, uh, but here we are quite in altitude, so with a quite fresh terroir, so it is quite interesting to have Roussan. And then we have Grenache Blanc and Vermentino. Okay. So it's uh, around 50% of Roussan, 30 Grenache Blanc, and 20 Vermentino. And uh, can you, we had the question earlier from Sean about the grapes matching to specific soils and so what's the predominant soil that the white grapes are grown on? Uh, here is uh, mainly limestone and clay. Okay. Um, for the white grapes we choose the deepest soil to have okay. a more, more water and a more reserve of water. Um, so it's mainly clay except for one we have another white called solus uh, which is on limestone pure okay. limestone with uh, uh, russian and um, and grenache blanc but uh, we for the white we try to choose the deepest soil and the exposition uh, face to the north okay yeah, to retain so, acidity yeah acidity and to have uh, less warmness and uh, but here is quite corbia is uh, as you know is quite warm, mm. quite dry, but we try to, to find some um, fresh place for us. Mm. And for you, I mean, lots of winemakers say that the clay gives their wines a roundness, a complexity, a texture. It gives them the wines a richness. Is, is that the same for you in Corbiere? 
Yeah, I see. We have we we see um, because here, here we have mainly clay mm -hmm. in other vineyard um, two kilometers from here. We have mainly um, sandstone. Okay. With with the same grapes, we have different wines, and okay. they are faced to the south. We are faced to the north. Okay. So here, I think we have maybe more structure. Okay. Maybe more complexity, but there they have um, wines you can drink. Uh, I think younger. Yeah, okay. So the structure and complexity from the clay, basically. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. So tell us, Etienne, why don't you describe this this white for us in the winemaker's own words? What's the um, well? What's the winemaking? And then give us the tasting note on the wine. Mm. Just one thing about clay. Uh, clay here in the south of France is very interesting because uh, when the winter is rainy, we can keep all the water of the winter. Okay. And for the summer, it's quite interesting. So it's very interesting to have clay soil, I think. Mm. Because um, the roots can go down and get that water access in the summer. Yeah, exactly. Okay, mm. okay. Um, about this wine, <coughs> the wine making is very, but it's quite simple. Um, we, we press uh, the grape directly, except for Grenache. With the Grenache, we keep it in the press to make a small maceration to give um, a, structure, a small structure to the wine. Because okay. uh, we have, uh, in South of France, we don't have big acidity. Uh, so we try to have a small tannins to give uh, a structure or freshness to the wine. Um, and uh, that's why we we uh, we make this maceration with Grenache, and it gives uh, different aromas as well. Okay. Um, and tell me, um, with the with the white, um, you're really looking for you're looking as wine making. You're not really focused on huge aromas. You're more focused on the texture and the yeah. palette, really. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because naturally, we have our, uh, we have flavors. Uh, we have uh, uh, it's the same with the red, with the fruit, with the flowers. Mm -hmm. But we try to keep um, or to, to, to find uh, freshness in the wine, okay. a small acidity. Um, that's why nice, we excuse me. There's a nice mineral note in this as well. Yeah, we try. And I think we uh, introduced the Vermontino uh, four years ago. And it's very interesting to give uh, um, something more juicy than before. And uh, we, need, we, need the, we need it. And um, what we, uh, yeah, we try, it's quite, is that why we, 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 we manage now uh, in Biodynami uh, is to, to find more acidity in the wine. Okay. Mm. Is it, okay, so maybe that's a good time to, to talk about the Chateau then. Um, how, long, how long since you started to work? When you arrived in Chateau Caraguil, how long have you been there? Because when you arrived, it was conventional farming, wasn't it? No, it was, it was uh, organic farming. Oh, we started, was it? Been, okay. Yeah. Uh, we've been, fun. The, the estate uh, is uh, organic for more than um, 40 years. They started okay. in the, during the 80s. Okay. But, and we arrived uh, 15 years ago. Okay. And um, so there was a, a big work to do in the vineyard. Okay. Um, and since uh, 2020, we are, we try to be, you now we are in biodynamy. Well, we are satisfied now. And the forest is very, very interesting to have this new point of view. And so when you say we, you mean yourself and Pierre, the owner, um, but really Pierre lives in Holden running the chateau, doing the full conversion, 
organic and biodynamic, making the wine. I mean, effectively, you've been managing the chateau for the last 15 years. Mm. And how old is the chateau? Because I know that you, first of all, <coughs> excuse me, worked on the vineyards. Now you're renovating the chateau. But how old is the chateau? How old? <laughs> um, oh, we when we we go in, um, you know, you have you have the the wine Les Jardins. Uh, Les Jardins in Carrie is a is a parcel, is a, a block. And we, we find uh, a lot of pieces of amphoras. Okay. So uh, be, uh, 2,000 years ago, it was a Roman place. I don't know if they produce wine, but there was a relation with the wine because they, they, we find amphoras. Um, I, I can say that they, they start to grow grapes um, in the 13th century with the uh, Fonfroide Abbey, which is uh, at 10, km, 10 kilometers from here. Mm -hmm. So Kargi was a place where they produce uh, wine. But it was mainly in the tw uh, 19th century that they developed the monoculture of, uh, of wines. OK. So it's quite old. And, uh, now, Kargi is around uh, 600 hectares. It was the same uh, 500 years ago. It didn't change. And how many hectares are planted under vine, Etienne, of the 600 hectares? You were uh, 100. Mm -hmm. 100, and uh, we're in one block, one piece. So very interesting to man with, uh, for, for our um, organic management and biodynamic okay. management. And we have, so we have a, um, a higher place with, we call it the plateau and the vineyard on the foothills. And uh, we have some, um, on the plateau, we have some um, lambs. Okay. And, so, and, and they, they go to the vineyard during the winter and after they, they keep on the, they, the they nibble the they nibble the weeds in the vineyards. Yeah. Mm. So you have you have sheep and you have sheep. olive groves. Olive groves. Olives. We, we, olives. Well, what? Uh, 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 olives. Olive groves. Ah. Uh, no, no, we we don't have. We have some uh, wild olive trees. Okay. Okay. But we, uh, I think we will uh, plant um, olive trees next winter or almond trees. We okay, have nice, nice. Mm. Okay, so I know that you told me before that you didn't want to describe the wine, but I'm going to make you describe the wine now because you're the winemaker. <laughs> so please tell us, talk us through the aromas and flavors on the white. <laughs> uh, for me, it's quite. Um, we 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 talked about almond trees. We we can feel the um, almond flowers we have in the, in the vineyard in uh, in February in March. And uh, what we what I like in this wine is uh, the flavors of almond, uh, of uh, citrus as well, and we have something um, uh, mineral. So we um, we don't uh, we don't want to try to make wine uh, very aromatic, or uh, because, uh, for example, with the Vermentino, we have to to put uh, not a too big quantity mm -hmm. because after we have uh, it's too much, it's too much. Mm. So we have to to manage the Vermentino and. Uh, so for me, what we, we can we can feel a white white flowers, um, lemon, something um, um, not the limestone, but a small uh, what we call a small reduction, and uh, like um, so it gives a minerality to the it wine. It smells like a a stone on a warm day. Mm. Slightly peachy aromas as well. Yeah, right, peaches. Mm. Mm. 
After, we have a um, quite, um, it's quite smooth. A big, we have volume in the mouse, but um, what I like is at the end, we have a, a, a small tannins which gives, which gives a, a, the direction of the wine. Mm. It and gives uh, a nice finish, good lens. Mm. And, and there's uh, also a nice citrus refreshing note as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Mm. And what um, I didn't say is uh, for the wine making, and we uh, there is five between five and ten percent vinified in a uh, hawk barrels. Okay. Only to give uh, more complexity to the wine. We we don't want to fill the hawk to fill the barrel. But it gives it's like uh, paper or salt in the wine is something. Uh, mm. Okay, um, I think it's delicious, and I know the food match that we said was um, grilled duck breast and comte cheese. Um, I don't know if people have got this matched with, with anything in particular tonight that they think is working really well, but we'd love to hear from you if you have matched it with anything that you think is a really good match. Um, there's a question here from Christoph. So Gronja had asked about the chateau and about when it started to produce wine. Christoph was asking about the logo on the bottle and what's the story on the bottle logo, Etienne? Uh, difficult. Uh, the the sun. Yes, the you yeah. know the, the sun the sun logo exactly. Uh, in, in, I have to explain in English. Um, you know. Um, before in France, we have um, kings, we had kings, and we had uh, Louis XIV, the 14th, okay. called uh, the, the Sun King, the Le Roi Soleil in French, the King okay. Sun was the Sun King, I don't know. And, um, and it gives, um, Louis the 14th gives to Caragui, to the family of Caragui, um the right to be um and um I, I, to 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 keep at a high class i, I don't know the name uh, uh, people who who owns a castle or uh, aristocracy aristocracy mm. okay so because before louis the 14th everybody could say uh, i i belong to aristocracy Okay. With the fourteens arrive and they, no, yeah, you you can, you are not, you you are not, you are, and Karagi were belonging to aristocracy. Okay. So thanks to Louis for the fourteens, they could keep uh, the castle and um, the they could belong to aristocracy. Mm. That's why we keep uh, this logo, the sun. Okay. And it's because, a very traditional looking symbol, isn't it? But yeah. then it looks very contemporary on the labels. It's a nice common thread running through them. And it's um, sorry, go on. No, no, we, we chose this logo because it's easy to recognize and the in this is the sun we have in Corbiere. And it's okay. the, the image of source of France. Mm. So we'll pour the jardin now while we continue talking. Mm. Um so um, Chris was asking whether the different rootstocks affect the terroir characteristic. Yeah. Etienne. Yeah. The, the rootstock is very interesting. Um, before we could plant any vines everywhere, uh -huh. like that we could, you, you, you could take a Syrah and a Grenache and Pinot Noir and in the soil, and there were no, no problem. Uh, since the phylloxera, we had to find the solution to, to fight the phylloxera. Um, but every rootstock is adapted to a kind of soil. Uh, here is, uh, we have a, a big quantity of limestone, so we have to choose a special rootstock. So it's very, 
It's very important to, um, you, you talked about uh, our map soils in the website. Yeah. Uh, thanks to this big work we did in uh, when we arrived, um, we could uh, we, we could choose a good rootstock with, uh, with the good soils. Okay. If you don't choose a good rootstock, it's very, it, it can be very uh, dramatic. So, so things like um, drought, soil salinity, nematodes, that type of thing, you're yeah. matching your vineyard issues to the types of rootstocks that you're... Yeah, exactly. It's mainly the, okay. the, the resistance uh, um, of dryness mm -hmm. and, Dry limestone. and limestone. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. That's a good question. And then Christophe is, asked, is saying that Roussan is also known as Bergeron in the Alps and enjoy limestone in altitude. Would the Pyrenees be a good location for that grape too? In Pyrenees? Um, he's saying that would Roussan be good in the Pyrenees, do you think? Uh, yeah, uh, I think it could be, we, we could find some, uh, yeah, exactly. We, now, not, not in uh, Roussillon. No. It's too warm. Uh -huh. But perhaps in southwest. In, yeah, uh, it's a bit uh, cooler. And... Yeah. I think okay, it's... interesting. And but, but with Roussel, we have to, to be careful with the, the acidity. Sometimes it's very low. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need a bit of, maybe the altitude would allow the acidity yeah. though in the, okay. Yeah. So Clark's have sent a picture. Um, unfortunately, it's beyond my wit to be able to open it and look at it. Maybe Fionn can um, let us see what it is. I can't actually see what it is. Thanks for posting a pic, but I, unfortunately I can't see what it is. Um, so let's have, let's chat about the, um, the Jardin, <clears throat> Etienne. So yeah. basically the grape variety and the types of soil where you've chosen to plant this grape variety. But the Jardin is a, is a blend with um, Grenache, Syrah, and uh, Sanso and Carignan is about 20, 25 percent of each. The idea of this wine, so it's it mainly comes from the parcel I talked about, uh, Parcel Les Jardins. Parcel Les Jardins, when we find some pieces of uh, amphoras. Uh, the idea of this wine, it was to make a wine from Corbière with the personality of Corbière. Okay. But quite easy to drink. So we have something with volume, uh, with the, um, well, um, would, um, with body, but we don't want to have a big structure. So it's um, that the idea, thanks to Grenache and to the Sasso, uh, we can have something uh, smoother and um, um, I, I know I we have a, a name I can find the translation name in France uh, is gourmand uh, right something you you want to drink okay. is, a gourmand I believe means um, savory no excuse me uh, savory gourmand means um, kind of savory you know like tasted savory that, do you know the word savory? Uh, no. Well, it's gourmand means tasty, um, that you want to continue to drink it, savory type of thing. Sa you're savory? Uh, savory. Uh, <clears throat> so the winemaking for this red is different to the other reds. This is a... a more straightforward winemaking because you're looking for to drink early and to make a simpler style. That's yeah. the plan with the, the Jardin. Yeah, the, uh, exactly. But it's uh, why we call it Le Jardin because Le Jardin uh, in the history, Caragui, was the place where we grow, uh, we used to grow uh, fruit. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's the idea of this wine, the fruit. 
and and um, as you 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 say, uh, the idea of this wine is to um, is to drink it quite quickly. It's not a wine to keep a long time. Mm. So it's uh, uh, if you if you open a bottle, the idea is to open another one and to share with your friends uh, very simply. Mm. That seems fair. <laughs> so if you were, and I mean, this, we said the food match, the suggested food match. Sorry, I made a mistake. The food match for the scallops was, uh, <laughs> the food match for the white was scallops with citrus or grilled goat's cheese with fennel. And for the red, actually, it was grilled duck breast with conte cheese. But to be honest, I think duck breast in the white would be nice as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we yeah. said um, the grilled duck's breast and conte cheese with the with this. But if you were, you're saying that <clears throat> you would open this with friends, you know, say of a spring evening or an early summer evening, what would you serve with this at home with friends, Etienne, if it was you? And we got these food matches from the winery, but what would be your favorite match with the Jardin for food? For uh, it, uh, quite um, like um, it's it's um, one of the best wine to uh, for barbecue. You no. Know? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. From, nice. Uh, something quite simple. You 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 put on the fire to, uh -huh. and um, or and uh, just before the lunch, you can share uh, one bottle with uh, uh, some tapas or something mm -hmm. like that. It's, uh, okay. It's, I get this wine. I think that that does sound nice. Like some, even just some black olive tapenade on some toast or something. It would yeah. be nice. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so a quick tasting note on the Jardin: aromas and flavors. But for me, I, I have <laughs> I, I have to to open the bottles, but we we can we can um uh, some feel some black fruits mm -hmm. um, mainly and some and uh, some uh, okay, we, we the herbs from the surroundings like uh, rosemary and uh, thyme or thyme I don't know mm -hmm. the name and, uh, and uh, at the same time uh, you talked about tapenade we we can feel some uh, these flavors of um, uh, black olive tapenade. Mm. Yeah, um, actually, I get yeah. that sort of savory black olive note. It's funny how the wine can evoke a particular aroma, and I was thinking, oh, that would be nice with tapenade. And now you say, actually, you have a black olive note, and now I can smell it, and I can smell the black olive note that you can find. That's just what's amazing about wine, isn't it? It's all about the your taste memory, your aroma memory, um, and what it sparks off in the in your experience yeah. of the wine. <clears throat> but tonight is uh, for, for me here in Karagi is very mm -hmm. fruity. Uh, yeah, uh, it's very fruity fruit. as well. Yeah, and cherry and uh, raspberry. Yeah, and also a bit of. There is definitely some black fruit, like bramble or something there as well. This mm. evening in Dublin, that's our in Caldera, anyway, I am. But um, we've got nice high pressure evening. So obviously the fruits are really standing out. So it's uh, wine quite easy to drink, but we have remembered that we are still in Corbière. Mm. In Corbière, we make wine with, with body. It's not... Uh, it's not a Sanso or Pinot Noir. No, no. We can feel the sun, we can feel the, the warmness, but mm. our work is to, uh, um, to make uh, something quite smooth and quite mm. fresh. We don't, it's, it's the same for Prestige Solus. We don't want to make a monster with mm. big concentration and, uh, and uh, big structure. In Source of France, it's quite easy to make big wines but we try to um, to do we do we choose on another way mm. but there is a minerality and an elegance to the jardin 
Mm. So although, um, you know, although, as you say, it's got structure and concentration, the tannin is integrated and there isn't the there's a freshness and elegance to the wine, which makes it um, obviously important to match with food because you need those characteristics to match with yeah. food. Yeah, we, we have to remember that wine, uh, our wine are made to, um, to drink with, uh, with food. Mm. Mm. So it's interesting to, to find a good match with that. Mm. Okay. Etienne, we're going to do just a two minute break. We'll stop recording for two minutes. To, we'll just let the, Okay. So we're uh, back again. Um, so the, we're now moved on to the Chateau Caragale. This is the Prestige, which yeah. is from our point of view in O'Brien's, one of our most important wines that we work with you on. It's like a huge favorite of our staff and of our customers. Um, is this your is this your most important wine at the Chateau or the Prestige? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Um, I think in 2022, it, uh, yeah, it's more important. Okay. 21, and then, 21, it's a vintage 21. Okay. Uh, I like this vintage. But the specificity of 21, if we got the frost in April and mm -hmm. uh, the production was very, very low. Okay. Uh, but I like the style of the, this vintage. Yeah, it's mm. great. great uh, and I know you said to me when we met in France a few weeks ago that um, that O'Brien's, that we should, you and I should do our own blend of this wine, but just especially for Ireland. We talked yeah. about that in France, that O'Brien's would have a world exclusive um, cuvee of the prestige, which I must say I'm excited, excited to do that. That would be, that would be good. To do that. So in terms of, um, Gronia is asking about the grape varieties. Um, so how do you decide which grape varieties to go into which wine and why? So could you talk a bit into that? Yeah, interesting. Um, we have uh, in in red. We have mainly uh, five grapes: Sanso, Grenache, Carignan, Syrah, Mourvèdre. Uh, Carignan is the historical grapes in Corbière, and we try to develop uh, it, and to we believe in it. Um, Syrah is the main grape in Caraguilla. Because for Corbia, we are in a fresh place and Syrah goes uh, quite well. Sanso is a uh, very interesting grapes, which uh, give the very light wine, uh, uh, smooth and very easy to drink. And it's quite the same for Grenache, but with more alcohol and more body. So, uh, for example, in the first range of wine, you know, wine easy to drink, we are going to, um, uh, to choose mainly Sanso and Grenache. And if we, we want uh, more complexity, we will introduce Syrah and Carignan. Mm -hmm. If we want more personality at the place, we have a higher uh, proportion of Carignan. Okay. And if you want more structure and uh, a wine for the, to keep it uh, a long time, it's mainly Carignan and Morvedre. That's why in okay. the Solus, we have a blend of Carignan and Morvedre and a small part of Syrah. And Carignan is interesting because it's a great variety that became a bit unfashionable because it was difficult mm. to grow, difficult to vinify. It could become a bit animal if it was badly handled. But yeah. now people are replanting, and also there's some very, very old Carignan that, that people are really starting to use, reuse this grape again, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, it's very uh, adapted to the climate, uh -huh. um, uh, the warmness and the, the dryness uh, in summer. And um, so we can grow grapes with good maturity, with a level of alcohol acceptable compared okay. to Grenache or Syrah, 
which can give a very high alcohol. Um, so it's very interesting grapes. And uh, it comes from Spain, so very adapted to uh, mm, the temperature. Uh, temperature and dryness. But the difficulty for me is the vinification. Sometimes, often, we go uh, too far. Okay. And that's why we have too much structure and too much tannins. And okay. it is very difficult to, when you have a good grapes, you, uh, but you think they are very good. Uh, the difficulty is uh, during the vinification is not to touch the grapes. Mm. So, uh, so often you, I have good grapes, I have to, uh, to make a remontage, pigeage, uh, I have to, to, to make uh, a lot of things, but when you have good grapes and mainly for Carignan, I think there is nothing to do. But you have to accept that. Mm. Harder to do nothing than to interfere yeah. in the winemaking. <laughs> Surely to try and be hands off. Um, why don't you describe the aromas and flavors of the um, Prestige for us, Etienne? So Prestige is a, is a blend of Carignan, Syrah and Grenache. Uh, there is a, a good proportion of Syrah. Okay. Uh, so what does, what does Syrah give the wine in terms of the personality to the wine? What does Syrah give? The syrup, yeah. um, it gives uh, a, um, a big aromatic, sometimes uh, peppery with or black fruit and uh, spicy. It's very interesting because here uh, on, uh, we have a thirty percent of syrup, a place mm -hmm. in uh, planted in different place, so we have different expression of syrup, mm -hmm. and it's very uh, interesting because sometimes we are going to harvest one syrup. 10 days before than the other one at only uh, 500 meters. Okay. Because exposition is not the same. Yeah. So we have different expression. And uh, we, we keep some syrup for the prestige. And we realize that they are always the same, mainly mm -hmm. uh, it's the same for solutes. It's only the same syrup. Okay. Because it gives the expression that we are looking for for this wine. And uh, for for prestige, uh, we are looking for, at the same time, uh, Syrah would give freshness to the wine and Syrah more uh, Mediterranean style with uh, flavors and more, more body. Color? And color, but we always have color. And, uh, okay. <laughs> sometimes too much. Okay, and then um, how would you describe the flavors and the prestige? Now, oh. oh, it's um, a vintage 21, so it's more, uh, for me, more, more fresh, more red fruit than uh, the vintage before, which was more uh, South style. Here, it's, uh, for me, well, yeah, red fruit, like um, uh, raspberry or... Um, uh, and uh, we can feel on the well uh, because we have uh, around 50 percent, 40 percent of uh, aged hog barrels. So we can feel the aging in the hog with uh, notes of cacao or uh, coffee, but quite light because mm. we have the, it's quite fresh. And uh, at the same time, we can feel we can, yeah, we can feel the surroundings of the vineyards. When the, I do the, get the wild herbs in this as well. Yeah, the rosemary and the thyme and so on the garig. So Michael was asking about, and we talked about this earlier that some of your vines are not pruned yet because of the risk of late frost. Um, but Michael was asking about um, climate change and whether you're looking to change any of your grape varieties or if climate change has already affected your vinification or maturation. Mm. Uh, 
Yeah, 30 years ago, people wanted to plant only Sierra and Grenache. And now it's different. That's why we, we plant Carignan. Okay. And Sanso. Okay. Which uh, very, Sanso comes from here, from Languedoc. Okay. And uh, it disappeared uh, in, during the uh, 80s and 90s for Sierra and Grenache. But it's very, very nice grape to, to make uh, light wines. Mm. And it's quite the same with Terret. So we, we start to see uh, old, old grapes we, we, we okay. could find 30 years ago. So we try to plant it in uh, white Carignan, for example. Mm -hmm. um, like the, going back to ancient grape varieties or old, yeah. rediscovering old varieties. But here, I, I think we are. Uh, quite lucky for the moment with the, this, this change of climate mm. because we can blend. And uh, with the blends, one vintage Sierra will be better than a Grenache, but the year after Grenache will be quite better than the Sierra and Carignan. Oh. So it's not the same as, for example, in Burgundy with only white grapes. Mm. Uh, if the, the weather is different, you you will see directly the difference of the climate. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. It's interesting. Yeah. It's an interesting yeah. take on the blends. Yeah. So you're spreading your risk, I guess, being allowed as you are there to plant the different grape varieties. Obviously in Burgundy, they can't do that. So yeah. look, let's let's pour the solace, the last wine. And we have a question from um, Gronya asking about how you ensure consistency across the vintages, Etienne. How do, you keep the, how do you keep the quality and the wine style consistent across different vintages? Um, we, don't, we don't want to, uh, every year we, we want to, to feel the vintage. Okay. We don't want to erase the style of the vintage, but uh, we have to keep a style on the, on the estate. Mm. But I, I think the style comes naturally with the grapes we, we grow. Um, what we try to do is to, uh, to harvest not too, too late mm. or not too soon. Uh, uh, and uh, um, because 15 years ago or 10 years ago, um, use for concentration in the wine. Now we try to, um, what was the question? I, I, I forgot. The question is how do you keep this consistency? And okay. But yeah. I think you've answered. I mean, it's about vineyard select, uh, it's about I, food quality, etc. I, I, I think we, we arrive to keep the quality, but with the, with the personality of the vintage, mm. mainly okay. with uh, Solus, for example. Uh, in Solus, we always um, have the same Sierra, the same Carignan, and the same Morvel. Okay. So the idea is to have the personality of the, of the vintage, but we can change the proportion of Sierra, of Carignan, or Morvel. Okay. Or we can age longer or differently with uh, different barrels. Yeah. If we have more acidity in the wine, uh, we are going to use a different barrels, not the same as the year before. Yeah. Mm. Well, the thing is that from bud burst to you know the final fermentation and then the aging, there must be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of individual decisions that are made in each vintage in order to keep the quality and consistency. And each vintage has got those individual decisions that have to be made. Yeah. And I think that's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah, there is a, uh, you're right. There is a big uh, rock in the vineyard and, uh, and we, we are here to, to adapt uh, yeah. to the climate, to the condition of the year. And how adaptation uh, make the, 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 the expression of the vintage. So uh, 
yeah, our only work is to, uh, to, to find the good adaptation of the year. Yeah, yeah to reflect it, to reflect the terroir actually, back yeah, to the original right. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's talk about the solace. Talk, tell us about the, um, the solace as a wine. Now, Solus, so means a light in Gaelic. Okay. So uh, and in a... Good company, Latin. Etienne. I know you're a huge fan of Ireland and of Dublin when you come to stay. So, yeah, we're <laughs> going to accept your Gaelic word tonight. And, um, and uh, Solus means in a Latin uh, language, uh, the unique wine. Um, so we we uh, since uh, for for uh, fifteen years we we choose a special parcel of uh, each grapes of Syrah and Morvan and Carignan vinification in a carbonic maceration or in a traditional vinification and uh, it's a main a blend made with mainly Carignan and Morvedre. And Sierra. The idea of this wine is to make a wine with personality, but uh, a wine you can drink uh, two years after the vinification, but you can keep it more time. Um, for us, it's a real expression of the Boutonac terroir uh, because it gives a place to the Carignan, uh, mainly Carignan. And with uh, an aging which is not too present, so we it's around uh, sixty five percent of aging aging in the whole barrels, but we we try every time to keep uh, the freshness and the fruit to keep it. Okay. So that's it's quite why we powerful, rich, concentrated wine, isn't it, the cellars? Mm. Yeah, we have a big concentration, mm -hmm. and twenty one we have a. Uh, a good balance between the fruit and the tannins mm. and uh, for me it's very interesting vintage it was quite the same in 2014 okay uh, we there are quite lighter vintages as we are uh, as well usually okay so. and because it's your most um, premium wine it's got its own unique look of the label it's got the heavier weight bottle and so on is the, the idea. Etienne, we're actually out of time. I hope you don't mind if I just ask if two or three more questions. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, are all of the grape, are all of the plots vinified separately? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our winery is not very easy to do it, but uh -huh. we try to each block and each uh, part of block to uh, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a question about whether organic wines is less of a hangover. If you don't mind, I will say not really. It's the alcohol that's the problem with the hangover. Um, it's important to drink a glass of water when you're having a glass of wine, eat and keep it moderate. But unfortunately, we can't hand on heart say that organic wines cause less of a hangover. Necessarily. Um, the Prestige is a beautiful wine. What's the per percentage of the different grape varieties? Oh, prestige is uh, around 50 per, between it's depend on the uh, between 50 around 50 percent of Syrah. Okay, and the other 30, variety? 30 uh, 30 of Carignan and 20 of Grenache. It's quite of the, Grenache. Uh, okay, proportion. thank you. Um, Christophe was saying there's a lot of old grapes that were abandoned and replanted, and new generation of winemakers who want to test lots of new things like raising wine and amphoras and bypass the more traditional way dictated by the AOC. Um, what's your position in blending traditional with new, Etienne? With new uh, grapes from other region or you? Well, the, just say, for example, if you say to do some more experimental type work in amphoras and so on, moving away from oak and going to, I suppose, well, we know that you found Roman remains of amphoras in Carrigale mm. <laughs> before. So I suppose it's back to the future, isn't it? Going back to amphoras. Do you have any amphoras? Yeah. You do? 
Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay. We do. We, uh, okay. We mainly, uh, for, for the moment, we mainly uh, age uh, white and Carignan. You know. Oh, really? Right. Okay. So you're very open to experimentation. Mm. Um, Gronya is asking, how do white Carignan grapes compare to other well-known white grape varieties such as Chardonnay or Sauvignon? Yeah, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, there is um, a small quantity of, it's difficult to find Carignan Blanc today in Corbière. But okay. um, I have one, I know one uh, winemaker here. Um, you don't, when you drink it, you don't know where you are. And it's okay. really interesting from that. And there is one um, I, I drank uh, la, last week, I think, uh, Carignan Blanc of for Vintage 15. I think you can't say it comes from Burgundy. Okay. Okay. Then Sauvignon. But it's very, very interesting. Great. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Does drinking wine from a straw change the taste? Um, I think it probably does. I think if you're going to drink wine from a straw, also try to take some air in as well, so as that you're releasing the flavors on your palate because the oxygen is important for releasing the flavors in the palate. So I would always say, um, yeah, take take some air with the um, yeah. take some air with the straw as well. I don't really understand Michael's. Um, <laughs> I don't understand the last bit. I'm confused. Sorry. So, um, Etienne, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, um, and thank you, everyone, for um, basically joining us this evening. I hope that you've all enjoyed the wines. Etienne, it's been really good talking to you. As usual, we could have spent another hour chatting, but it's yeah. great to get um, the chance to have you this evening. And I know that things are busy at the winery. You've been bottling today and you've still got pruning to do and so on so we do appreciate you taking the time and thank you very much everyone for joining oh i've got to mention that the winner of the bottle because otherwise fion will complain to me was about it's actually michael how will you adjust to climate change different varieties changed in the vineyard changed verification and different maturation so um fion will message you directly michael to get your address um, so is that we can send out a delicious bottle of solace. Uh, one more question, one more message has come in and I'll just say, uh, oh yes, thank you Etienne, merci beaucoup Etienne. So um, everyone seems to have enjoyed the tasting. Thanks so much Etienne. We'll see you yes. in May at the Wine Festival. Our Wine Festival, as you know, is the 26th and 27th of May. Etienne already knows top tip for anyone listening in tonight um, the tickets are going on sale after Easter so if you want to meet Etienne in person and taste the wines with him in person please head along to the RDS this May 26 and 27th he'll be with us along with another 65 producers from around the world um, so thanks Etienne we'll see you then thank you Lynn. thank you very much thank you, thank you from everybody <laughs> okay